Born and raised in Sri Lanka, our next presenter is a highly accomplished registered psychotherapist with over 20 years of experience working locally and globally on women's issues and community development. She has published her research in several conferences, including the 1995 United Nations Women's Conference in Beijing and the 2009 Tamil Studies Conference in Toronto. Currently, she is a counselor at Family Service Toronto. Please help me in welcoming Sada Vivekanandan. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm going to speak in Tamil and uh, English as well. So time to time, I'm going to switch in both languages. Um, yes. Uh, before I sp start my speech, um, as you know, I'm a psychotherapist. I'm a counselor. Um, so without doing some acknowledgment, it's very difficult for me to start any presentations. So actually I would like to acknowledge the natives, the aboriginals, the Métis, the Inuits of this country because we are settlers here and they are allowed us to come to live here and to celebrate this International Women's Day on their native land. I also would like to acknowledge and remember the women who have fought for our freedom, who are still in prison all over the world fighting for human rights as women's rights or women's rights as human rights. I bow down for them and I would like to take a moment of silence to remember and appreciate their hard work. Can we all stand up for a moment? Thank you. So I was asked to speak Tamil women in leadership or Tamil women and leadership. I am going to switch in both. So actually, this is not tonight. It's International Women's Day. And this is not to undermine any man's role as leaders. That's what a disclaimer I would like to make before I speak, <laughs> OK? Um, uh, because uh, Dilani was talking about uh, what is women's empowerment, and I was thrilled to hear about uh, the presentation from Wes and T, the panel. I was really taken up by the panel, and particularly from a male um, person who was saying, yes, women should be in the management role. Welcome. Uh, I really appreciate that uh, part of that speech. And all the other women who spoke here about how much risk they undertook to be in their positions today as leaders. So I was thinking while I was sitting and listening there, should I have to rewrite my presentation quickly or should I have to continue this? Because I wrote in the similar words there. So pardon me if I am repeating anything. So it's a pleasure and my honor to speak to the Canadian Tamil Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, members and guests who are here tonight. Thank you to Canadian Tamil Chamber of Commerce for recognizing me as a speaker. What I will be talking is, I was asked to speak about Tamil women and leadership. I would like to discuss whether there are opportunities for women to achieve leadership roles and goals in the Tamil community. I'm going to touch on how ethnicity and culture are barriers for Tamil women. In other words, is it a limiting factor for women to be leaders in the Tamil community? What I will be discussing today are actually a collective thoughts and experiences of women and men in the Tamil community. Honestly, when I was asked by Anoja and Dilani to come and speak, 
I called a few people from different professions, men and women, girls and boys, to see what do they think and what we have to uh, do in order to achieve our women in the Tamil leaders in the Tamil community. So this is actually a collective thought. It's not just only my experience. I have quite a lot of challenging experience like others while working internationally. Being a woman, being a colored woman, living in Sri Lanka, being a deputy field director for the whole country for one of the international organizations, dealing with Sinhalese men, Tamil men, Sinhalese ladies, everything was challenging. However, that's the risk I took. So, what I will be discussing is actually a collective thought. To start, I would like to present some statistics about immigrant women in Canada. Immigrant women and girls represent 20% of the country's total population. Immigrant women are primarily admitted in the family class category, 59% of the total, or as spouses, dependents in the economic class. Almost half of all refugee class immigrants are women. Finding suitable employment continues to be a challenge for female newcomers. The proportion of recent immigrant women with a university degree working in non-management leadership roles was three times lesser than for the Canadian-born counterparts. Paid work, women are still less likely to be employed than men are. Stats Canada says 2011 that the gender wage gap continues to persist in Canada. On average, for every dollar earned by a male worker, a female worker earns 74 cents. So that's the present statistics in Canada. So I'm going to talk a little bit about women's empowerment. Dilani spoke a bit about that this, more, this afternoon when she started her presentation. What I'm touching a bit more elaborating on that because when we started to talk about women's empowerment in the early, late 70s and early 80s at the, in the United Nations or internationally or in the community service sector or at the civil societies, it was a scary word for a lot of us. Not only for men, it's also a scary word for women. So what does this women's empowerment mean? Where is this going to take the whole world? What's going to happen? Uh, women can be leaders in the society or not. So at the end, this is what the United Nations and UN Women has in their, as when they talk about women in power and empowerment. First, it's not online anyways, however, this is the important part of women and leadership. Eliminating all forms of violence towards women and girls in public and private spheres. Because every day we hear and we see and we read how many women have been violated or assaulted all over the world. Ensure women's effective participation and equal opportunities for leadership at all levels of decision making in political, economic and public life. Reforms needs to be put in place to economic resource provisions as well as ownership and control over land and other properties. I am sure there are a couple of lawyers here who would say yes to this because when marriages fall apart or when, a par when parents disease, how hard it is for women to acquire their financial needs. So that's the last part of the financial stability. However, the ultimate goal is that women should not be beneficiaries, but rather they should be actors in the change process. Leadership can occur at different levels. It could be within the family, middle level in an organization, or system leadership. That's what we saw in the panel, as well as when Vasanthi was speaking, even Rovina, who was singing about the women's role in her song, and she was saying about her advocacy. Leadership does not mean it is power and authority. Leadership is a vehicle to take all dependent parties from one level to another and achieve specific goals. So the following is what my own experience of being a leader in different parts of the world when doing my work. 
I was actually a gender trainer for Asia region, which was really, really um, a very busy job, I would say. Um, I miss my family, yes, but I was a role model to them. Um, I was a facilitator, so I learned a lot how to communicate, how to interact, how to deal with challenges in a positive way. So the following is actually a my own experience to be a leader. But I'm still not in the political arena, bear in mind, I'm still in the community. So taking risk, the, so the leadership is equipped with the following in my own words. Taking risk, accumulating collective thoughts, engaging in, engaging in appreciative inquiries, displaying courage, establishing support systems, feeling no guilt, no shame. I saw this coming out of the Vasanthi um, and the other panel because they were talking about risk. They were talking about building relationships. So that's the same. So it is a transformative relationship. In this regard, it is not power and control. It is a form of a mutually beneficial social interaction and influence. So this is what I think about leadership. Then I'm just going to touch a bit about each of these elements, or at least three of these elements which I talked. So let us look at how Tamil women can achieve their leadership goals. I'm going to touch on each of these elements a bit. So let's talk about risk taking. How many of you thought, when you, before you came to Canada, I'm sure some of us would have seen snow and lived in snow, but how many of you have experienced snow, and how many of you thought, Snow is so nice. Or so many of you thought, oh no, I'm mine. I am not coming, to going to Canada. However, we all came to Canada. Isn't it? We took a risk. So, women often feel and think they cannot be leaders or they are deterred to be leaders because it is a risk. Women should not see opportunities for leaders as a risk because life is always and be always risk. I undertook quite a lot of risk. Even standing here and talking in front of you is a risk for me, okay? So I often think, <laughs> yes, I was thinking, I don't know how many of you will take my presentation, positive or negative. I often think coming to Canada was a risk, which most of us here all took, but we should do the same to our younger generation. Uh, I was also asked, or send, uh, Anuja, uh, sorry, Anusha, Anusha sent me a question um, on the email asking me, do you think, Sada, ethnicity and culture are barriers for women to be in leadership roles? And uh, I was like, I don't know. Um, but I don't think um, ethnicity and culture uh, barriers to certain extent um, because um, women in power and leadership is or has become a global issue. So why I'm saying is when we started the women's empowerment at that time in the early 80s we only thought about violence against women and human rights and education and knowledge and um, uh, child mortality rates and improving the health of women. But then later on, uh, when we proceeded and did a lot of research and talked to or in our work, we realized that leadership should be part of women. Women should be in leadership positions. That's what this, mo this afternoon, uh, Honorable Minister also said the same lines. So it is important to recognize that ethnicity and cultural barriers are not unique issue only to the Tamil community, as it has been recognized as a global issue. It is the power and leadership is in the UN Women agenda. I was at the Beijing conference in 1995. I did a research in Sri Lanka. Um, it's uh, during the war. Um, the 1995, there was a major displacement, and then uh, I did a research on the social changes of the women um, in the North and East. Um, so I presented the, the paper there. Um, 
and that platform for action was one of the platform for action was women and leadership and is, it is still part of the 2013 UN sustainable development goal as well. So in Canada, the Tamil community continues to grow fast. The first generation has explored opportunities and put their feet in the economic and political growth of Canada. It is time for the next generation of women to lead. It is already happening. We had a female MP. We have a female school trustee. We have female community leaders. We have female board members of directors. Even the women here who are managing your own businesses are leaders in my eyes. So you all have the skills to be on boards and be agents of change. However, we can achieve far more as Tamil women. How we can achieve, it is the question in, in front of us, from front of every Tamil Canadian. Whether it is the person, that person is a leader or not, it's one of our responsibilities. We cannot achieve these leadership positions or in, empower the community without collaboration or collaborating with each other. We cannot achieve it without undressing our preconceived thoughts as males and females. I was talking to my director one day during the lunchtime. It was a casual, it was a very casual uh, talk because I always had that guilt and shame inside of me, like, or running around the world or being in late meetings. Am I missing anything? Am I missing my family? Um, should I be, um, get into more leadership positions or should I um, stand out of these situations? Then he told me, um, no, Sada, you really have to. You don't miss because uh, you are the role model and he knows my sons and then he said, they have grown up a good young man, so that means you didn't miss anything. I, uh, they didn't miss you and you didn't. It's a role model. So somebody said this morning, uh, this afternoon while talking, the um, Honorable Minister said, uh, if women are in leadership position, that's good for the family because whether it's a male child or a female child, they see that as a role model. So in the leadership, it's actually the decision making is the key part and building the strength to your family is the most important issue. So I don't think we all have to have fear uh, to be leaders. So as actually, as I said, I'm going to repeat, we cannot achieve it without undressing our preconceived thoughts as males and females. We, as the Tamil community, can support women to achieve roles as leaders by treating men and women equally, rethinking strategically, and redirecting the issue as not an issue, as an opportunity. I, I always think that there are opportunities, we can do many things. Um, when my sons come and say, oh, Amma, I cannot, I will, I, I will always say, I don't like the word I cannot, because you can always, you should try. Somebody was saying here, unless you start a business, you won't know what a business is. Somebody was telling, unless you lose a business, you won't know what is lose. And in my work, and there's no failure in life. If you, some people say, oh, I'll be a failure. No, the failures are step to successes. So we need to try and we need to achieve what we have to. So, thank you. So Canadian Tamil Chamber of Commerce is celebrating its 25th anniversary. Congratulations to you. Your, I, I browsed your Canadian Tamil Chamber of Commerce's website before I started my speech to see what exactly their vision, mission, and their focuses uh, in order for me to align this um, speech. So it says your 25th year focuses are entrepreneurship, leadership and community development. In this regard, having a forum on, to encourage women to be leadership roles shows how much the past and present leadership is open for discussion to grow healthily. So in conclusion, I would like to say that Ta Canadian Tamil Chamber of Commerce could be a catalyst in the change process
to make women as leaders in the Tamil community. This can be in the business sector, in the community, and even in the schools among youth. So that's my um, presentation about leadership. I hope you enjoy. Um, thank you for listening and thank you for lending your ears. Um, before I get out from the podium, I have a small uh, token of appreciation for every one of you. Um, so there's going to be some envelopes. Some volunteers are bringing um, envelopes for each table. And each table, um, you actually have to take one piece of paper. There's a message in that piece of paper. Please read that message. And that's you, who you are tonight, and enjoy your night. So please take one piece of paper. And all those were, those were created and written by me. These are from all my experiences, all my readings, and all, whichever I discuss with um, my peers and my colleagues. So please take one. And I have these things on my office, and I read them. So it motivates people. Hope you'll enjoy that. Thank you.